Hi, Larry Elterman here, and today I'm going to try to tell you everything you need to know to make an informed decision about what kind of UPS to buy. UPS, that's Uninterruptible Power Supply. That's the kind of thing you buy for your computer so that if there's a brownout or blackout, you don't lose all your work or you don't damage your computer. But it can also be used to power other things like lights and fans and printers and anything else that you might want at your workstation. So um, what exactly is a UPS? That's my first question I'm going to answer. So a UPS is actually made up of three separate components. It's made up of an inverter. And you can buy an inverter without being a UPS, uh, which and but a UPS has an inverter in it plus other things so an inverter is something that takes a battery DC voltage usually 12 volts sometimes 24 volts and converts it to AC current that you use either 110 volts or 220 volts depending on where you live so it will back up your uh, your power by converting uh, when the AC power goes off it will automatically switch over to the battery and uh, AC current backed up by the battery from the DC battery. So that's the second component of a, of a UPS. You have the inverter which is the actual um, device to convert DC current to AC current. You also have a electronics which sense when there's a brownout and immediately switches the current over to the inverter uh, to the DC power so that there's no loss of current. It happens so quick, usually in a millisecond or two, that the computer doesn't even know what happened and the computer will be able to continue functioning with no loss of data or no interruption. And the third part of a UPS is the recharging function. So with a UPS, if you, if you go to the inverter and you start using up the battery, eventually the AC current will eventually come on and you need to recharge the battery. So, uh, so that's basically what a UPS is. It's to stop you from uh, losing any work when you, when there's a brownout or a blackout. It has the inverter part. It has the sensing part, which switches over, which switches over, and it has the recharging part to recharge the battery once the AC current comes back on. Okay, so if you're not experienced with buying a UPS and you really don't know what you want, you'll find that it's very confusing. There's many options. There's very cheap UPSs, there's very expensive UPSs. There's UPSs with internal batteries and there's UPSs with external batteries. There's UPSs that have something called modified sine wave or you can pay more and get something called pure sine wave. And um, you also have to decide how much power you want how much wattage you want to be able to back up. So there's a lot of choices when you, uh, when, when you decide to buy an uninterruptible power supply. So you have to ask the question, how do you, how do you go about choosing what you want? So uh, here's the thing. I'll make it easy for you by saying the first thing you have to decide is how much backup time you want. So some people only want a UPS so that, to protect them against a, a sudden brownout. And as soon as they see the brownout, they will shut down the computer. Either they will shut down the computer or the sh computer will be shut down immediately. And all they need is about, about five minutes, uh, five to ten minutes at most, to save their work and to properly shut down the computer. Usually just a few minutes, but a typical cheap UPS will provide five to ten minutes of backup time before the battery runs out. That's a cheap UPS with an internal battery. So, but some people don't want a UPS just for that. They want to be able to continue working in the event of a brownout or blackout. So for example, if you live in a country uh, like I do in the Philippines where power is not dependable, sometimes the power goes out for a long period of time and I want to be able to continue working. So with my current setup, for example, just with a battery, I can, I can use my workstation for about five hours. So the first decision you want to make is this. Do you want the UPS just to protect against a sudden brownout or blackout and you plan to shut down the computer right away? Or do you want time to work? Do you want to be able to continue to work after the uh, brownout or blackout? So uh, 
This is the first decision you're going to make, and based on that decision, you're going to make other decisions. And I will get into that now. Okay, so suppose you only want a UPS for to power your computer for a few minutes while it has time to shut down. So what kind of things do you have to worry about? Well, if you only want to be able to shut down immediately after the power goes off, you can usually buy a cheap UPS with an internal power supply like this. And the cheap UPS is going to be usually modified sine wave, which I won't talk about now, but that's the cheap version. And it's usually going to have internal batteries. And the only things you have to worry about are this. Do you want the computer to shut down automatically? So some UPSs provide an interface to the computer and software so that you so that when the uh, UPS detects that the that the uh, power is out, it will automatically shut down the computer for you. And some don't do that. You always have the job, the option to to shut it down manually if you want. And the other thing you have to worry about with a cheap UPS is just simply the amount of power that it has. Usually, the cheap UPSs are rated in VA. I don't know why they rate them in VA. It's annoying. It's confusing. But just remember this. Uh, if you want to go from VA to watts, to be safe, just multiply by 0.6. So if the VA is 600, is 600, multiply that by 0.6, that's 360. Usually you can get about 360 watts out of a 600 uh, VA system. So that's easy. Just oh, uh, You can figure out how much watts you need in one of two ways. Uh, either you can look at the rated power of each of the pieces of equipment that you're going to be using, that is the monitor, the computer, and anything else you want to be on during those few minutes. You can do that, or you can do it the other way with a, a amp meter, and uh, which you can buy. The, the, a reasonably good amp meter has a way to, uh, to detect amperage, and I won't go into how that's done. You can f learn how to do that if you want. If you buy such a uh, meter, you can figure out how many amps are being used and then multiply the amps by the voltage that's being used to get the watts that are needed. For example, if you uh, detect with your amp meter that you're using two amps and you're in a place with 220 volts, 2 times 220 would be 440 watts. You would need a UPS that backs up 440 watts. Uh, usually a, just a computer by itself these days is usually 100 watts, something like that, plus the monitor. Usually it's under 150 watts. So uh, that's all you need to worry about if you're going to buy a cheap UPS. But if you want to back up uh, extended periods of time and you want to back up more than just your computer, then you cannot go with a cheap UPS. You have to go with a more expensive UPS. So I'm going to talk about that now. Okay, so suppose you've made the decision that you want a UPS not just to quickly shut down the computer, but you want to be able to work at your workstation for a significant amount of time. So that will limit your choices greatly on what you want to do. So the first thing you have to think about is batteries. So you need a UPS with an external battery. And when you get a UPS with an external battery, you get to choose the size of the battery that you want. Now, if you get a, a small UPS with an internal battery, that will not be able to charge a large battery. So you can't just take a small UPS, take out the batteries, and use a big 12-volt battery. Uh, no, that won't usually work because uh, it has to have the ability to recharge a larger battery. So the UPSs that are designed for an external battery usually have a more powerful uh, uh, charger that can charge up a large battery. So the first thing you have to decide when you when you know that you want to buy a UPS to back up your system for extended a period of time, the first thing you have to know is that you have to get an external battery. And then you have to decide how big an external battery and you have to know how much time you're going to get approximately. So how do you calculate how much time you're going to get? Okay, so here's what you do. The first thing you have to do is figure out how much watts you're using. So uh, so you have to look at everything that you want to back up while the power is off. So for example, let's take a look at my workstation. I have here a couple of different lights. I have here uh, uh, ways to back up my phone. Uh, so I have char phone chargers. I have a battery. I have a, a, a fan, I mean. I have a couple of lights. I have my monitor. I have my um, 
keyboard and I want all this going uh, while I uh, while the power is off. So the first thing you have to do is you f have to figure out how many watts you're using. So um, and as I mentioned before you can do that in two ways. You can either try to uh, look up the ratings of all the different things and add up the wattages or you could use a multimeter. I said before a um, an amp meter but of course uh, I said uh, you need an amp meter that ha that can measure amps, but of course an amp meter could always measure amps. What I meant is you can use a, uh, a one of those multi-purpose meters. Some of them come with an amperage measuring function, and if you do that, you can figure out the volts by measuring the amps and multiplying by your line voltage, and then you can figure out how many how many uh, watts you need to back up. Now, in my case, I need about uh, only about 150 watts. My monitor is pretty efficient, my computer is pretty efficient, and then I have the lights and other stuff, so I only need to back up about 150 watts. So how do I f figure out what kind of battery to buy and how much time I'm going to get? So when you buy a battery, they usually they come, uh, they're rated in what's called amperage hours, AH. So for example, the battery I have is uh, 80 AH. So how many watts can that deliver? So here's what you do. You take the 80 and you multiply it by 12 because amps times watts, I mean amps times volts is watts. So 80 times 12 means that I can deliver approximately 960 watt hours. But here's the thing also now, uh, it's not perfectly efficient. When you convert from DC to AC, some power is lost in heat. So how efficient is your UPS? Some UPSs will tell you how efficient they are. The cheap ones can be very inefficient, like only 40 or 50 percent inefficient. Very good ones can be up to 90 percent efficient. Uh, you can make a general guess that if you buy a decent UPS, you're going to get an efficiency of about 0.8. So if you have an 80 amp per hour battery, multiply the 80 by 12 and multiply that by 0.8, and that will tell you how many uh, watt hours you're going to get. So in my case we have 80 times 12 times 0.8 equals 768 watt hours. That means that we can power 768 watts for one hour. But in my case all my equipment is only using up 150 watts so we take 768 is that right? Yes, yeah, 768 and divide by 150 and you get a little over five hours. So I have figured out that with my UPS and my battery and my efficiency and my equipment, I can run for five hours without uh, any electricity, just from the battery. So um, that makes me think about something. I want to address one question. How do you know at the end of the five hours that you should shut it down before the computer actually shuts itself off? and you lose your work even though you have a UPS. Well, there's a couple ways you could do that. Uh, most UPSs, including mine, will give you a warning when the uh, electricity is about to run out, either an alarm warning or a blinking light or something, and then you know to turn off the computer before it actually uh, uh, runs out of electricity. You can also uh, monitor the battery if you want. You can monitor it with a voltmeter, and you can see how the volts are going down, and when the volts get down to about 11.5, it's probably uh, time to shut down your computer. Certainly if it gets down to 11, you're in a, a critical range where the computer could crap out at any time. So uh, that's the way you know how to shut down your computer if you're using a long backup. So that's the first part of the discussion that I wanted to have if you want to buy one of these uh, UPSs to back up for a long period of time. It's about the battery and how much time you will have with the battery, the UPS, and the equipment that you have. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is pure sine wave versus simulated sine wave. So uh, when you talk about AC electricity as opposed to DC, which comes from a battery, AC electricity, the power goes up and down. The voltage goes up to some amount more than actually the rated voltage. Then it goes back down and up and down, and it goes at a perfect wave. If you were to look on an oscilloscope, of what AC current looks like, it looks like this. And that's called a sine wave. And the current that comes from your uh, outlet is a pure sine wave. It looks perfectly like this. And all your equipment that you have in the house is designed to run off 
this pure sine wave. But pure sine waves are difficult to make from a battery. Uh, it requires a lot of extra electronics to make a pure sine wave. So some of the inverters or UPSs and or UPSs uh, take a shortcut and they don't produce a pure sine wave. They produce what's called a step sine wave or a simulated sine wave or a modified sine wave. They're all the same thing, but I prefer to call it a crap sine wave. And I'll get into that in a second. But uh, here's the thing. Even some of the, uh, some reasonably expensive UPSs uh, use a modified sine wave. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to use your UPS for anything other than just shutting down your computer, please don't buy a modified sine wave. Don't let them convince you, otherwise you, you really need a, a, a pure sine wave. And why is that? Well, for example, if you tried to plug in an electric fan into a modified sine wave, it usually won't work. A lot of lights, a lot of LED lights won't work if you try to plug them into a modified sine wave. If you plug your speaker into the into the AC current, if you have, if the speaker connected to your computer is plugged into AC current, and you use a modified sine wave, it's going to have a lot of hum and it's going to sound horrible. If your speaker is plugged into the uh, USB port of the computer, it will probably be all right. But the more powerful uh, speakers use AC current, and they're going to sound horrible with your um, with your modified sine wave. So please don't buy a crap sine wave. You want to make sure that your UPS is a pure sine wave. And, uh, and, and a lot of times they might not even know what you're talking about, but believe me, if it's a pure sine wave, it will say so on the UPS. It will, it will be proud of the fact that it's a pure sine wave and you'll be sure to see it. If you don't see anything, that means it's a modified sine wave and you'll probably see a little print somewhere on the box or maybe in the in the uh, user's manual that said it's a modified sine wave. I have a funny story about that which I'll share. Uh, I, I went to buy a UPS in the Philippines where I live and they don't really know too much about what they're doing sometimes. Uh, the computer people, they're, they're just uh, they're sales people. So I told them I wanted a, uh, I wanted a UPS with a pure sine wave. And the guy said, pure sine wave? Pure sound wave? Uh, UPSs aren't for sound. You're, th you're thinking of a speaker. Uh, UPSs don't have sound. There's no pure sound. And I said, no, 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 no. Not pure sound wave. I want a, a UPS with a pure sine wave. And he looked all confusing, confused because he obviously had no idea what I was talking about. And he got back up from another person who was, I guess, a little bit more senior to him. And he said, this guy wants a UPS with a pure sine wave. And the other guy said, signs? Why does he want to buy a sign? Uh, UPSs have nothing to do with signs. I mean, I'm not kidding. This is what actually happened to me. And finally, I said, never mind, never mind, never mind. Just show me the user manual. And uh, that's how I figured out whether it was a pure, pure sine wave or not. And, uh, of course, uh, it was hard to find a uh, UPS with a pure sine wave from the computer stores. Most of them are cheap. So I had to look around quite a bit to find what I wanted. So, anyways, uh, if you're going to buy a UPS for anything more than just quickly shutting down your computer please buy a UPS that delivers a pure sine wave. Okay, so um, what else can I talk about when it comes to uh, UPSs? Uh, some UPSs uh, have something called Line Interactive, or AVR. Uh, so that what that means is uh, it actually controls the voltage even if there's not a power outage. So if it's line interactive, it, t it attempts to keep the voltage and other parts of the current working well, even when there's not a brownout. So it will keep the voltage constant. Most UPSs don't work that way. They just are what's called pass-through, which means that if, the, uh, if there's not a power outage, it's just passing through the voltage, passing through the current and voltage that's coming from the outlet. So it's as if you're just plugged directly into the outlet. The, uh, the inverter or the UPS is not affecting that that uh, that electricity and the electricity is only uh, coming out of the UPS if there's a brownout so that's a pass-through versus line interactive and uh, I've always gotten just a pass-through I've never had a problem with the current coming from the plug so I'm not worried about that myself 
but if you're really paranoid, you might want to get something that has what's called line interactive uh, electricity, which means that it's an automatic voltage regulator in addition to being a UPS. Okay, and the final thing I'm going to talk about is uh, where you buy your UPS. Because most of the time, if you're dealing with computers, you're going to buy your UPS at a computer store, and that only makes sense. UPSs that uh, come from a computer store are designed for computers. But you can actually go to a hardware store and get an inverter with a UPS and charging function. And I, I was actually skeptical about this because when I was in the being in the Philippines, I, I looked around to see if I could find a uh, a UPS with a pure sine wave, and I was having a hard time. And I was thinking about it buying it online, but you know how it is to buy online; it's expensive and if it's if you get it then it's not what you want you're in big trouble it's very hard to return it so uh, I went to some hardware stores and I found a an inverter with a uh, UPS function and a recharge function so it was called it was called inverter plus UPS uh, plus charger and it looks like this this is what I bought and uh, it's a lot cheaper than uh, UPS from a computer store and I was skeptical, but the guy uh, convinced me to get it. He said he's been using it for years, and it works great. And so I got this thing. Uh, it's a Chinese thing, and it works great. I assume it will last a long time. The guy told me it, he's had it for years and years. And uh, I was afraid that maybe it wouldn't switch over fast enough or wouldn't work, work well, but it, it works great. So uh, anyways, I think I've said everything I want to say about UPSs. Um, I did mention that some UPSs have a automatic shutdown so that uh, there's an interface from the UPS to the computer and that you can set it up so it automatically shuts down. And I guess that's a good thing if you're not going to be around. But that that's to prevent the computer from being damaged because in the old days when there was a power outage sometimes the operating system would get uh, messed up. But they've done a pretty good job of making sure that doesn't happen anymore. So a, a, a power outage usually won't damage the operating system. Usually, I can't promise, of course, but uh, I've, had, I've had my computer shut down by accident many times, and it's never damaged the operating system since Windows 7. Before Windows 7, it would sometimes get damaged. But the main concern I really have is making sure I don't lose any work that I'm working on and to be able to continue uh, working after it's shut down. So uh, after the electricity goes off. So I'm not worried about the automatic uh, shutdown. But you may want to get that too if you're really uh, worried about, uh, you know, to make sure that nothing bad happens to your computer. You may want to get a UPS with an automatic shutdown. Okay, so uh, I think I've said everything I know what to say about a UPS. I hope I've helped you uh, in your decision making and how to buy a UPS. And remember, pure sine wave. That's all I have to say. Okay, thanks for listening and sayonara.